Está gravando. Então, vamos para o segundo. Só um comentário. É importante para os que estão ouvindo. Para... Podem fazer perguntas. Fique à vontade para tirar dúvida aí com, com o Guilherme. Aproveite aí o expertise dele aí no assunto e podem perguntando aquilo que não, não entenderam. Se quiserem fazer algum comentário, também é importante, tá bom? So, as Professor Dan said, you can stop anytime. No worries. This is more a talk than more a serious presentation, and we don't, we must not interrupt. No, you can stop anytime. Okay, just feel free and raise your hands. So we'll move to the next step. The next part is talking about proxy emulators. Okay, we, we talk about uh, a model that includes the physics, and now we move to the next one that is proxy emulators that we are not including physics anymore. We are just using uh, analytical formulations in order to, to speed up some parts of the process, depend in terms of proxies and emulators, we can use an extra technique that is we can deal with uncertainties. So I will explain later about this, this two topics. Right? So proxies. Né? So the first thing is we are talking about simulations, what we use the simulate, right? We use the simulator, uh, we use calculation to understand the real world, that is the Bretonian reservoir. In order to predict uh, reservoir performance, mm -hmm. check and validate alternatives to increase reservoir recovery, right? Risk. But what is, why do we want to use proxies and emulators? Why do we speed it up? So the first thing is we have here, inputs, we have a lot of inputs, we have a lot of outputs, and we have the simulator. Simulator, the commercial simulator is a black box. We, we know that um, uh, while using the reservoir simulator, but it's a black box, we don't have access to go there and change the code. So we just need to inform for them. It's a black box, the inputs that we have for us, etc., and the output that we need to evaluate, for example. Relative oil, water, gas production over time, net present value is the return, field, and etc. But sometimes when we talk about uh, high level of complexity and high grid resolutions, this process is lower because we are we, we need to, we want to use robust methods for the three main areas. What is the three main areas? The first one is to uh, assimilate data for incentive production. The second one is to predict the future. The third one is to take decisions. So we have these three main areas, and we wanted to evaluate thousands of uh, simulation runs because we have a lot of inputs, we have different scenarios of uh, geological properties for us, we have to have uncertainty. The structural model, we have uncertainty in everything that we are including in our model, we have uncertainty, we are not sure. So, and this requires many evaluations of each of these objective functions. So, this is the main reasons. We, we wanted to speed up a process. For example, this simulator is a kind of turtle that we can use here with a, a booster here in order to speed up this process. So this is the idea why, why we wanted to speed up the process. So speed up this process, we can use, we can use consistent and efficient models and give the option to the decision maker to choose a model, right? Based on the importance of the study, the available time and resource. For example, if the, the manager um, is not worried about time, Okay, I'm not worried about time. You can perform on the analysis that you want. So feel free. So you can use the simulator. So sometimes it's kind of balance. You need to balance what's the time that you have, the importance of the study, and also the resources. <coughs> and using the simulator, sorry. <coughs> and using this <coughs> simulator, can uh, include um, other techniques, for example. We can include proxies. I will explain later what is the proxies. We can include hybrid models. <coughs> hybrid model means I'm including analytical formulation and also the physics 
that is including the in the real field. So this is the environment called here the hybrid. We can use artificial intelligence, right? We can also use the emulators. So this is the the we used to call these uh, fast objective function estimators. We can use these four different fast objective function estimators <coughs> in order to to have um, <coughs> an information about the this uh, objective functions that the simulator is also evaluating, but is using sometimes is using a long time execution. Right? I will now uh, give a, a examples of this speed up, and in this speed up, we have three main activities. The first activity is I'm a speed up without loss of a purpose. <coughs> what I mean for loss of a purpose. I'm just speed up, just changing the number of um, processors. I'm speed up, just changing, uh, just changing the numerical setting of the inside the reservoir simulation model, and just change all the information. I'm not losing the occurrence. This is the first one. <clears throat> the second one, I'm losing occurrence. This is an example. When I use this uh, technique that we used to call it as a sector modeling. We, we, we have imagined that we have a, a huge reservoir model. I think it's in the, the previous presentation of Yunsen seminar, they present a, a huge field. As this huge field is have uh, different sectors, four sectors. And these sectors is not possible to simulate the entire model because it's not the objective, because the this big the giant field uh, has just one part producing. So it's not necessary to simulate all the area, but it's important to have the link of the areas. So, so this uh, second model is one alternative when we don't need to, to model out the entire reservoir. We can just uh, divide the reservoir based on uh, flow lines and etc., and then simulate just one part of the reservoir. So this is a loss of accuracy that we are losing here, but we are saving time because we can simulate this part first, then just include the whole reservoir, because we are not interested in this area here, just what this area here. So this is our target, because this target is not developed yet, but it's part of the reservoir. So this is one alternative when we want to speed, speed up without loss of accuracy. This, the third one, we just want to speed part of the process. What it means part of the process? Here we can see a typical example. We use the simulator to just to, to run few runs, right? This few runs is the this point here, this green point here that we can see here. And with this uh, few simulation, we build our proxy or emulators. And with this uh, proxy, we can fill the entire solution space. So the, the green uh, circle is the, the output that we, uh, we get from the simulator. The orange one is the output that we get from the process. So as we can see here, we just fill some runs. And with these runs, we build our proxy. And with this proxy, we fill the entire solution space. And with this entire solution space, we can change the decision because just using simulation is not possible to cover the entire solution space. And with proxies, we can cover the solution space and we can also change the decision. For example, this is the maximum uh, net present value, right? But filling the entire solution space, I can find a better, a better uh, combination that is almost, is almost the same same amount of uh, return in terms of net present value, but with less water reduction here. So we can reduce the amount of water, keeping almost the same net present value. Right? So this is one uh, application of proxy. And this is another uh, that we the, this application here was applying in order to optimize the production strategy. Okay. This second one here, I just wanted to build the risk curves. So we use, we run, we, we, build, we build this risk curve, use the simulator, 
is the blue line here, and this is the net present value, and this is the percentile of a production curve. And also here, we have the proxy. The proxy is the red line here. So as you can see here, we have the same, the same pattern, the same behavior, comparing the simulated output and using the proxy model. So we can save time here using the proxy model in order to build the risk curves. The third one is using emulators. With the emulators, we can, emulators help us to understand about the reservoir, uh, reduce the uncertainty, and also to mitigate this uncertainty, quantify this uncertainty. As we can see here, we have here the blue line is the hypothetical reality. This is the, our, for example, our real answer that we have from the reservoir, our historic information here. The, the red one is the initial scenarios, right? And the, the green one is the scenarios after 100 days, um, 100 days, uh, 1,000 days, sorry. What means 1,000 uh, days? I build my emulator at a specific time, that is 1,000 days. Just to remember, one thing is important. When I build, when I build emulators or proxy, I need, I need to choose one time that I want to evaluate. So with this time, I can use the, the proxy or emulator, et cetera. So we can, okay, but you, maybe you have a question, oh, but I can build emulators, proxies uh, over the time. Yes, of course. You can, you, you can build emulators and proxies for different times, and you can link these emulators and proxies as a, a model, with another technique, another equation in order to, to have a proxy emulators for the total period of time of production. So here we build the, the, the emulator using information for 1,000 days, is the, the, the green curves, and we build the emulator for here with um, 3,500 days. That is the, the light, the cyan color here. So as we can see here, build emulator with uh, with additional information, that is the additional information of 2,500 days, we can get a better emulators here, as we can see here. And also to reduce uncertainty means understand more about the reservoir. And of course, I, I have less uncertainty here. And another example using uh, emulators, you can also use emulators in order to, to match the the information. The, the reference is the, is the black circle here, as we can see here. The initial set is the gray color here, the gray, gray lines here. And the green one is the after performing and building emulators by stages. By stages means by different time of the production for as well. I build an emulator for this time, I build one emulator for this time here, I build an emulator for this time, and then for this time. With all the information, was possible to reduce the uncertainty and get this result here. So this this was very great result because with the emulator we can cover the entire solution space. We can don't need to to run thousands of simulation runs. We just run a couple of simulation runs. We build the emulator and then we can use for the next phase. So after explaining the three main applications of the, the proxies and also the emulators, I will give a general overview of a proxy. So reservoir simulation have thousands of blocks, variables, and attributes. And this process is time consuming. And sometimes this process is slow and sometimes it requires simplification to the process. This simplification results in decreasing the probability of finding a better solution. So this is the, the problem that we actually have when we are talking about uh, simulation. So this is a, an example that we can explain the, the main reason or the main reason that we are talking about why is a proxy. This is a Bigfoot, that is the reservoir simulator, and we want we wanted to, to, to achieve this target here. The target is the top of the mountain. With the Bigfoot, with the 
this is our simulator. We can we need to pass through all this area until we reach the top of the reservoir, the top of the mountain. And use the proxies. The proxies are aircraft. So the aircraft can go there fast, faster than the this big foot, of course. But we have a problem. What is the problem? The problem that we have here is not possible to land these aircraft in, in any place here. So if the big foot, we can go there and doing this way, okay, it's fine. But with this aircraft, we have a problem. It's not, it's not possible to land, to land um, in a place or somewhere, right? So this is the, the difference when we are talking about proxies and related proxies. We have a limit that is, okay, I create a proxy with this range of uncertainty. I cannot use the proxy for a different range that we are using. So we need to be careful with when we change the, the range of uncertainty, we need to uh, rebuild our proxies and double check, revalidate, and etc. Just to be careful, this is a difference. So the idea of proxies, instead of using many simulations, we use a predetermined number of simulations. We generate the proxies, and after generating the proxies, we need to perform a consistency check that uses this and call this as validation. And then with this, everything is validated, and I, I can use the proxies. I go to the application. The application can be to predict the production to performance certain reductions, to optimize the production, and etc. So the idea of the proxy is to use another procedure tool. We want, we want to use this technique to develop, speed up, and bring an additional option to the process. So I, we create new possibilities. We open the solution space. We cover the entire solution space using proxy. So we, we wanted to use an auxiliary tool. We don't use, okay, we don't need any more, but don't need any more the reservoir simulator. No, it's not the idea. The idea is to use integrate with the reservoir simulator. Instead of using many simulation, we use just a couple of them. Right? So example of proxies. Artificial neural network is a proxy, multivariate creating models is common use in uh, geo model, geo modeling, right? Response surface methodology, emulator is a kind of box that I explain later. So what is the the type of proxy that I'm talking about. I'm talking about proxy, but what is a proxy, generally speaking? Proxy is analytical function, right? This is an analytical function that I'm talking about. That's represent the cumulative oil production. This is the terms that uh, we match our, for our proxies, and this is the term that I'm using as uncertainty. So this is the term of first order here, this is a term of second order here, and this is an interactive term. So I have one, one attribute here, one parameter here, and another parameter here. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the type of process that I'm talking about. I'm talking about analytic functions. With these analytic functions, I can change the inputs, that is A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5, and also in getting the information from input, and also get the information for WP, information for uh, oil factor recovery, and the information from net present value. So this is the process that I'm talking about. And when I'm talking about, okay, I'm talking about proxies and how to validate. This is a common practice. We have the proxy model in one X, the information from the proxy model and the information from the simulator model. I just get the information from both sides and check, okay, everything is aligned in this, uh, this line, this line is a 45 degree line. If you have the same information from the simulations and the proxies, I will have the same point aligned, this line. So as we can see here, all the results are aligned. So the proxies can reproduce the simulation outputs. And so we can move to, okay, so the proxy is validate, we can move to the next, that is application. This is just uh, highlight some examples. Instead of using the, the simulator to build the risk curves, I use the proxy models. As you can see here, this is for NP, this is for WP, and this is for NPV, and this is for oil recovery factor here. So we can see the area, they have the same pattern 
So the same, almost the same value with a reduced time. Oh, this is the reduced time that I can save just using the proxy model. It's 50%. So it's a long, it's a, it's a huge time when we are using the proxies and we wanted to, okay, we wanted to, we needed to disrespair for tomorrow. We can build this uh, proxy that is it's not complicated. It's simple, so we can use and build this proxy, and then we can perform the analysis. And another example of proxy. Also, we have here we fill the entire solution space with just a couple of runs here of the simulator. We build this uh, entire solution space. This is we call this the frontier. Is a kind of envelope, and then we can change the decisions. Okay, and also it's the same that the previous present. So the process is very good, but we need to be careful because we have some limitations. So what we cannot do with process, we cannot extrapolate too far with confidence outside the range of uncertainty. This is is uh, following the idea of the aircraft. The aircraft cannot land anywhere, cannot land somewhere. Uh, we estimate. Uh, simulate output that is not trained to. So, for example, suppose that I build my proxy for NP and WP, and and I not use, for example, the net present value. So, not possible because we train the proxy to to, to estimate uh, the NP and WP. We cannot include an additional one. Okay, if we include, we need to rebuild the part the proxy, etc. And we cannot replace the simulating all stages. We can use in some parts of the process, and we just select the, the most time-consuming process when we are using the simulator, and then we come back to the simulator in order to, to finish all the analysis. Another thing, because this is a very common uh, proxy that sometimes is very good to know, uh, we cannot use proxies when the simulator is cheap. So if we are running the, the simulator in seconds, we cannot, it's not necessary to build the proxies because the, the, the time saved will be, will be small. So we need to be careful. If the simulator is very cheap to run, do not use proxy. Do not use proxy when you, uh, when you, you don't validate, of course. When you have a bad set of simulation runs, or what I mean, training runs, because sometimes people uh, don't care about the, the runs, they just run, okay, I will just select one point here, one point here, one point here, and one point here, one point here. This is the, my entire solution space, right? Or not space, but the range of uncertainties. And this part is not covered. This part here is not covered. So this is a, a bad set of simulator runs because we are training our proxies, mm -hmm. but we are just selecting these runs to train. So your proxy will just work well for this variable here. So don't use proxy for with a bad set of simulation runs. And when we are not sure about the application, because if we are not sure, we cannot use, we don't, we don't recommend to use proxy because it's important to know what is the input that I have, what is the output that I have, okay. With this input and output, I can get uh, some runs of the simulator and then train to predict the output, right? Just to be careful with this. Uh, proxies, the bottom line is uh, reservoir simulator is often too complex to simulate many times to cover the whole solution space. Uh, what I mean is to understand the reservoir and also measure the effect of a certain simulator output to forecast production. So replace a simulator with proxy that is much quicker and with low computational costs to run, but you also depend, you also need special attention. Special attention means validation, in order to check all the points that I previously mentioned here. Right? We, we, do, we need to be careful when we are talking about this. So this is the bottom line about the process. Now we go to the emulator and I'll explain this. So do you have any question about proxies or until now? Okay. 
Okay. Emulation process. Uh, emulation process is a is a process that a computer models encodes a function, take inputs and producing outputs. So this is the function that inputs that I have here, have all the inputs that I previously present, and I select one time, I, I got this NP, WP, and etc. So this is the function that I'm talking about, the emulators. So emulator is a type of proxy, right? And a, a special attention is a statistical approximation of a function that not just give the information of the, the output that we are emulating, for example, cumulative oil production, but also give us the own uncertainty. We are, own uncertainty means we are estimate, not estimating just the outputs, but we are just giving us an idea of how these outputs is, is uncertainty. This really means the difference when you are talking about emulating proxy. A proxy, the, the proxy just gives us the, the estimation of the input. Emulator gives the estimation of input and also its own uncertainty about the input. And this, uh, this own uncertainty means I have a statistical measure of the error and also I, give, I, I must give enough training data in order to estimate a small error variance. So let's see a uh, typical emulator. So this is a typical emulator. But to build this typical emulator here, what I what I need, I need the mean, I need to, I need the variance, and I need also the covariance of the uncertain output. So this is the, this is the emulator function here. This is the the scholars that I don't know. So I I must to 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 understand these scholars using a kind of uh, Regression models. Regression models uh, is kind of uh, information that you have. For example, if you have this point here, in order you, you to uh, to understand the pattern of this information, and I have information here. Huh? I just uh, build uh, a model here. Just create a regression line here. So this regression line here is a linear one. Okay. So this linear equation, I don't know the, the linear coefficient, not the angular coefficient, right? So this is the unknown scholars, and this is the no deterministic functions. I know this information based on the mean and variance and the covariance of the uncertain output, and this is the Gaussian process. So for typical emulators, we have different types. We have the linear emulators, as this part is just a linear uh, equation. We have the polynomial, that is, this part is a polynomial, and we also have the, the emulator with linear parts and also with the Gaussian process part here. This Gaussian process part is to get noisy behavior. So noisy behavior means, for example, when I have this information here, So it's not linear. You can see here, we have different pattern here. With this Gaussian process, I can get this behavior here. So this Gaussian process is necessary when we don't get uh, good emulators just using the, the simplest one, that is the linear and the polynomial. So this is the Gaussian process. And this information we use as a non-parametric term. And so when I talk about emulator, what is a good emulator? A good emulator is the when you create and we build this emulator that estimates the code accurately. What is means accurately? We have a small uncertainty because we can run all scenarios fast and efficiently. As a proxy, we build here also an equation. With these equations, we can run all scenarios fast and efficiently. Conceptually, talking about this emulator, we use uh, some runs of the model to learn about the function, 
and this and also include the historical data information here in order to derive any desired output of the model considering uncertainty. Let's see an example of emulator. This is a nice comparison when we are talking about proxy and emulator. We can see here, this is the training points that I have. This is the cross mark here. Okay. With this training point, I wanted to match the behavior that we have here. And then with this training point here that we are talking about in reservoir simulation is our historical data. With the simulator, we can build this, this dash, dash black, the black dash line here, right? And with the proxy, we can build our blue line. So this is the proxy. So we are just interpolating the information. We have this information, this information, this information, this information here. And we are building our process. We are interpolating in order to, to understand about what is happening between this point here and this point here and this point and etc. But with emulators, we can do the same. But an additional thing that is very important when we are talking about uncertainty is to understand about the credibility of this interval or about the uncertainty. So with the, the emulator, we not just interpolate the data, we have we given an idea about how uncertainty uh, grows or decreases between this data point here. So as you can see, when we are near the, the training points, we don't have uncertainty. When we are far, for example, here, we have this high uncertainty here. So with emulator, we not just give the expectation about the input, but we also give the variance between the variance of this output. This is the main difference when we are talking about emulators and just proxy. So when we are talking about emulators, we have different type of problems. The first one is how to deal with many outputs. When we are have many outputs, for example, NP, WP, NPV, etc., we can emulate each one separately, or we can treat the output as another input. For example, I'm one example. When we are uh, when we have the the geologic model, we are simulating porosity, permeability, and etc. This porosity and permeability is an input of the reservoir simulator, but is an output of the geologic simulator. So we have different type of input and output. So we can use this output from the another simulator to, 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 to build the, the emulator for this information, and then use this as input to the another emulator. That is the emulator for the reservoir simulator. So this is an alternative when we have many outputs and different uh, computational uh, computational code or computational block or black box, right? And when we have stochastic problems, stochastic problems, we just need to, to guarantee that is the the space is we can use a sampling technique. For example, Latin hypercube sampling method is one of them. So when we have stochastic problems, we just need to guarantee that the points that we are training our emulator is well spaced. Uh, another user or emulator. We're talking about emulator for the past, when we have the information. We can also use the emulator to predict what the simulator would produce as output. In this case here, we are using the emulator to reproduce and also to quantify the uncertainty that we have between the training points. We can also use the emulator to predict what the simulator output would produce. So how to work with emulators to predict simulator outputs? We need to have a model description. What I mean is model description. We need to have the, all the information to predict the future. The contour conditions of wells, uh, how many wells we want to, to predict, and etc. The most important thing is hypothesis and also the prediction points. 
So we want to predict for 10 years, five years. This is the point that we're talking about. And also when we are talking about location, the location that we want to predict. So just a resume uh, for the emulators, for the past, we want to reproduce the real simulation output using the observed data production in order to map, to assimilate data, to understand the reservoir model, and also to reduce uncertainty. And we want, when we use wanted to use the emulators to the future, we have no observed data. So we are just interpolating the information. We are just running the result simulation output in order to forecast the production and use some of these runs here to build our emulator. So both of them, both applications for past and the future, give us an idea how the uncertainty grows or decreases between the data points. This is the main difference when you're talking about uh, the process. And this is a, the same thing that we talked about, the, the, the validation that we use for proxies, we have the same validation for emulators. But this is a, an example of a bad emulator, and this is an example of a good emulator. A bad emulator, this is the emulator output, and this is the simulator output. As you can see here, we have a spread of all the information that we have. All the information is not aligned with this with this uh, black line here. So the, the, the training points is okay. As we can see here, the emulator that we built was able to reproduce the simulator output for the training data set. But when we moved for the validation data set, we can see the emulator is not working very well. So this is one thing that may happen. We build a, a nice emulator with the training data, but when we move for a different uh, set of data, it's not, it's, not, it's not working very well. So this is an example of a bad emulator, and this is an example of a good emulator. You can see here, the training data is, is amazing, it's very good, and the blue, line, the blue uh, circles here is also aligned with this black line here. So this is an example of a good emulator. If you can see here, we have the same uh, output from the simulator that we are emulating, and a difference, and here we have 100 scenarios, and here 500 scenarios. What I mean is, what I change from this to this, the number of training data set. We start with 100, 100 was good to train, but it was not good to, to, to validate the emulator. So we increased the number of training data set. So with this, we, we got better uh, emulators. So this is a good example. And use the emulator, as we, we use the, the proxies, we use the emulator here to build the risk curves. As we can see here, the emulator is in, in the green color and the simulator results is in black here. And this is the reference. So we can see the emulator is very producing is emulating the simulator output for the cumulative oil for different wells. So this is, uh, using the emulator was possible to save 20, uh, 25%. This is a 25% for a simple model. What I mean a simple model? That is a model is not, uh, that this model uh, doesn't have a long execution time. So this is the main reason that we save a small amount of time here. When we go to the, a more complex case, this time tends to increase. And this for water is the same. Here we are using the, the emulator to build the risk curves. So I, I, represent, I present some examples of how to use the emulator to uh, to build a risk curve. Now I will show an example how we can use the emulator in order to perform an optimization procedure. As we can see here, this is uh, a optimization, a traditional optimization, right? And this is uh, a optimization with the emulator. This traditional emulator, we have this start point here, and the through the optimization procedure, we move all this path until we get the, the final solutions. And using the emulator, 
what is the, the main difference? With the emulator, we fill the entire solution space. With this entire solution space, we can get all the entire regions that is possible to match. See, here, when we perform a traditional optimization procedure, we are getting just one solution. That is the best one. With the emulator, it's different. We are not interested in getting the best one, but we are interested in order to get the entire solution space that match our that match our what I can say that match our uh, confidentiality or our range of uh, how, how much I accept to get these solutions. So this is the difference. With the emulator, okay, we can feel all this air that is inside our uh, answer. And this is the production curves. You can see here. This is the the red part. That is this red part here. And this is the blue part. That is the blue part here. So we can see here we are not just getting the best one. We are getting the entire solution space that we can work and this is still uh, validate. So this is the difference. When we are talking about emulator, we are just excluding regions that for sure is not the answer. The region that we are not sure is not the answer is this region here in, in green. And for when we are performing a traditional optimization process, we are doing this path here. So this is the thing that we want to avoid, to get the best one. We don't want to, to get the best one. We just, we, we wanted to exclude all the region that we are sure that is not the answer. So move on to the final part, that is uh, third part. Uh, do you have any questions until now about proxies, emulators? Okay. Uh, the third part is talking about a little bit about models and proxies. So remember when I talk about consistent and efficient models, okay. The, the first thing is in order to know about the what kind of models or what kind of different fidelity model I must choose. This is a question that arises in all the discussions because, okay, I will use these grid resolutions in order to build my reservoir simulation model. I will use this one that is, uh, is higher than the other. This is a question that arises all the time. So the first thing is define the objective. What is the objective? The objective is, okay, the objective you must include the importance of the study. You must include the available time and also resources. With this information in mind, you can, okay, now I, will, I, I need to decide. I wanted to work with the past or I wanted to work with the future. If you want to work with the past, I want to perform a data simulation for a certain reduction. So I wanted to develop understanding about the past in order to predict or in order to predict a reliable uh, production. This is the idea when I talk about past. When I talk about the future, we just wanted to perform a, a field forecast in order to take decisions. So I wanted to maximize the return, the oil production curves, and etc. I must take decisions. So this is the different objectives. First one, I want to understand about the reservoir in order to, uh, to make better predictions or I wanted to take decisions in the future. In, uh, for, for example, in field drilling, in a, in a potential area, or a production strategy, include additional wells, include an injector, etc. Et this is the, the first step that you must define, okay? The second one, okay, I define the objective, I need to define the level of details that I want to build the models. The level of detail is based on the first step. So 
we needed to decide about the reservoir geometry, include top, base, faults, and limits. We need to include the grid block dimension specification. We need to include the reservoir properties, porosity, permeability, and natural gas ratio. Uh, we need to, to include the information from rock food properties, relative permeability, and capillary pressure versus saturation functions, fluid properties and models, formation volume factors, solution gas, viscosities, well locations and types, perforate intervals and productivity indices, um, numerical parameters, recurring methods. So this is the second step. The lack of details that I must include in all this information, okay? And the third one is the fidelity models. So I, I need to understand, okay, accuracy. Uh, I must to have a high accuracy in this model, or I must look at efficiency. So we need to, because it's a balance, if I got a, a high accuracy, this model for sure will, is not a, a um, this model for sure has not a good efficiency. So we need to, to have this information from the first step, from the second one, and we are to define the level of fidelity that I want to build. The level of fidelity is also included in terms of occurrence. This is a statistical error, measure mode high, and other fidelity models. And in terms of efficiency, computational elapsed time. These fidelity models include also uh, the reservoir simulation models at different levels of fidelity, including in terms of uh, um, for fast objective function estimators, in terms of uh, proxy emulators, um, AI, and, and etc. Okay. And the third one is I needed to, to balance all these three topics the quality of solutions that I'm very interested in, right? In order to take decisions, the effort, and also the resources. So I wanted to, to, to select a model based on this three information, solution, quality of solution, effort, and resources. So this graph is a good example and highlight what we are talking about. The quality of solutions or decisions that I wanted to, to perform is one act here. The other is in terms of effort, it's not just the computational effort. Is also the human effort. Because when we are talking about, uh, when we build the proxy, when we build emulators, we need to have a uh, previous knowledge about how to build it. So uh, we must invest in, our, in, in knowledge in order to understand about how to create, how to program, and etc. So this is a human effort that we are talking about. In order to learn about these techniques, and when you are using reservoir sim simulation, we are not spending too much time at human resources. And also resources. When I talk about resources, is the type of uh, power, computational power that you have. Sometimes you don't have a cluster. You, you, you only have, uh, for example, a local machine. So with your local machine, for sure, it's not possible to to run a high time consuming model. So we need, you must go to the, the simplest case that is to build proxies, build emulators, and etc. So it's a kind of balance here. So here is one example. We have the high fidelity model here, the quality of solution is high, and the time and effort in terms of competition and human is high too. And okay, so this is the line of the high fidelity model, and this is the line of the low fidelity model, the, the green line here. We can run, we can spend less time in order to, to run the same model, but the quality of solution will not be so good as the high fidelity one. So this is the main difference. For the same quality of solution here, we have different time, different uh, effort here. So example, this is the high time is higher than this one, than this one, that is the, pro the proxy, proxy system. 
process is a process here. So we are okay, but we want a high, uh, high, uh, high quality of solution. So if you high quality solution, you go for the high fidelity mode. So you see, when you are talking about fidelity models, it's a kind of balance that you, you need to, to worry about and be careful. Okay, we talked about fidelity. Now we'll talk about the, the type of models that we are talking about. We are talking about reservoir simulation model here. We are talking about proxy, emulator, machine learning techniques, and AI, and etc. Okay, and when we are talking about hybrid, remember when I mentioned about this term, we are combining the flow, the, uh, the physics that is included in the numerical reservoir simulator, and also the analytical formulation. So this is the, the hybrid. So the hybrid, I can assume both. I can assume the reservoir conditions and characters, physical loss, and also the analytic formulation. And numerical reservoir simulator, we assume the fluid cruise medium, the physical loss, that's what we're talking about, and the emulators, proxies, and etc. we do not assume the physical loss. So this is the difference when we are talking about different type of models and different type of fidelity, and there are different things. And this is a terminology that we are talking about uh, fidelity. We have here, it's the high fidelity one, is the most time consuming model and also the most accurate. We have the medium fidelity model here, in the middle, in terms of time and in terms of accuracy. And the low fidelity model. This is the low fidelity model, it's situated in this area, it's it's not fast as we have in the hybrid and proxies, but it's faster than the high and the medium fidelity model. And also the low fidelity models include the, the physics that we are talking about. This, uh, the medium fidelity model here is the most common model chosen by the industry. For example, uh, you are working in the industry with the geologist and our geophysicist, and okay, they build a model and they ask, okay, uh, we will build your numerical model and you use this numerical model to perform all your analysis. So when they build, they build directly this medium fidelity model. Just to remember, this nomenclature, this terminology is for our group. So when they build this model, we are assuming that this is the most common model, most complex that was used to build it the numerical model that the company has, okay? But this model sometimes is time consuming. What I mean is time consuming? It's impossible to use this model to run in special applications, for example, a production strategy optimization or any type of optimization that uses this model because this model is time consuming. It's not time consuming as it is the high fidelity, but it's still time consuming. So with this model, we build our low fidelity model. The low fidelity model keep the same characteristics of this medium fidelity model in terms of the flow pattern, but it's, uh, it's fast and the, the answer is not as accurate like the medium fidelity model, but it's fast. So we can use this low fidelity model in order to perform practical probabilistic workflows. Because we can, using this, we can save one time, then we have tons of simulation runs here. So this is the model we can create uh, using this medium fidelity model. Okay, but how we can create this low fidelity model? We can, for example, we can uh, perform upscaling technique, use the upscaling technique to build a new model with a, a low grid resolution. This is an example. We can, okay, we can uh, simplify the fluid because in terms, we can simplify the fluid in terms of what kind of recovery method we are using. For example, if we are using just water as a recovery method, we can use the black oil more. Uh, okay, but we, we have gas, we have also the, the oil, so okay, but if we have a, a compositional model with, uh, for example, build with set, Build, build for seven components. We cannot, we don't, we don't need seven components 
And sometimes we can build a simple one with four components. And with these four components, we can decrease the, the runtime and also build a low fidelity model just simplifying the physics. Simple physics means the the fluid, the fluid, uh, the characteristics of the fluid that we are using. But remember, when we perform this, uh, when we created this model, it's good to compare with the, the original one in order to check, okay, how different the models are. So this is important, okay? And when we build this low fidelity model, we, go to, we have the hybrids that include both physics and the analytical formulations and um, at the bottom here is the are the fast versions that the proxies and layers ai and etc so with this information sometimes you use information from the medium fidelity low fidelity high fidelity etc but okay but maybe you, you can have a crisis but we can use the all the levels of models Yes, of course you can use. When we use the three different models, we call this as a multi-fidelity model. So we can, for example, we can run some run, we can run this model here, just five, six times, for example. We can calibrate this model here using the runs of this high fidelity model, or we can use this model here and calibrate with the information from the high fidelity model here and this is a multi-level information can we use the three level information and also link to this one here if you use just two you have the two two level uh, fidelity this is the different so we can use the three the three levels of different uh, three levels of fidelity in order to build a more accurate and fast version. You can use this. And also we can use the, the proxies and layers with this, with all the three different levels. So we can have a multi-level uh, hybrid technique using analytical formulation and also the physics that's including the reservoir simulation. So we can have all of them. So this, uh, talking about the the challenges that we have in, in, in model fidelity and also in proxy, in reservoirs numerical models, uh, one thing that is very important evaluate this discrepancy that we have, and we are taking into account the different fidelity models in terms of fluid, read resolution, the problem mat, the proxy models. Uh, represent the spatial property distributions. This is a big problem that we have because remember, when we are talking about proxies, we are using some inputs in order to to, to mimic the, the, the output from the simulator. So we have this information here in a specific period of time. And when we are talking about special properties, I'm talking about porosity, permeability. So remember, I have the grid cell, I have the information from this grid cell here, information from this grid cell here, information from this grid cell here. How we include the information of porosity in order to build our, our proxy or our model? This is a challenge that we, we are, now we are facing in order to solve this. And also when we are talking about proxies, we can use for past, future, or past and future. For simple cases, okay, we just use one, one level, is one proxy type. When you use complex case, we must get into multi-level techniques, multi-level proxy, multi-level emulation, and etc. And when we are talking about different times, remember, because when we build a proxy or emulator, we select a specific period of time. And when we build a proxy for the entire period, we just use, uh, create another one that is a time series and time series and later. And after this, we, we can, we are able to define the most suitable time and stage of work to study 
uh, study the proxies and emulators. This is not simple. We can we can ha we have a lot of times, and sometimes this time here is less informative than this one here. So we need to be careful. Not just select one time uh, randomly. Select one time based on the full behavior, the full pattern that you have from your field. Um, in order to, to finish this part in terms of models and fidelities, it's important to have the objectives clear. This is one of the most important things. If the objective is clear, we can select the model, a model that includes physics, that is using the reservoir simulation model, high, mid, and low fidelity, or you can use also uh, analytical formulation or hybrid ones. Uh, another thing is to evaluate different types of input in order to decide the level of accuracy and efficiency that will be necessary to perform the proposed objective. Sometimes we have simple inputs, we don't need to go to a more complex one. So we can use this uh, simplest one and then check, okay, it's working, it's not. Okay. This is, if it's not, we can go to the next level that is more complicated formulations. So if it's okay, you just use this simple as you have. And the last one is to build a consistent and efficient models. You can use both. Can you use reservoir simulator, include the physics, Use analytic formulation, use proxies, emulators, AI, and etc. So today, the final remarks. Uh, it's important that we have all models uh, consistent. All models must be consistent. Perform a consistent validation checking. It's always checking the time that is this model is consuming, and also the errors. We are talking about here the reservoir numerical simulator, simulator, because if we have, okay, uh, a low time consume here, maybe we can we can have here a huge error here, because this error is related to how our mathematical representation or our numerical representation is representing the real field. Don't forget this, is always look at the time and errors. Errors means material minus errors, the most common that you can check. And we also check if the models is performed efficiently. If not, we can reduce the, this time, just setting some uh, numerical parameters inside your reservoir simulator. Uh, another thing is important. We are not just focused on developing fast model. We are focused on also on quantifying uh, the uncertainties in order to get reliable models to forecast the prediction. We wanted to take better decisions. We wanted to reduce the amount of effort and also give the opportunity or give the idea for the decision maker to select the most suitable one. Just to be careful. We don't just want to uh, accelerate the process, but we wanted to give extra information using this kind of techniques. Because if we use just numerical simulation, sometimes it will not be possible to cover the entire solution space. And using these fast versions, we can cover the solution space, can reduce the time, give better decision, right, to pretty increase the, the production return, and et cetera. As I said, uh, the, with this information, the decision could choose the most suitable model based on the importance of the study here, yeah, available time, and also resource, computational and here. And choosing proxies, uh, it doesn't matter what type of proxies, emulator, etc. we must know the answer, the, the basic answers that we are talking about. What's the requirements to use proxies, emulators, or any type of proof, and what are the conditions to be used? So with these two basic questions, okay, we know the answers, we can go ahead and use this type of, of proof. 
that's the objective functions is to use. These, uh, these are the reference that I use to build this, this talk. So this is my email if you have any questions and this is the knowledge. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. If you have any questions about this presentation today, now, or anytime, you just can send me an email. Thank you so much. Obrigado, uh, uh, I don't know if anyone has any question. Uh, this is this is the most quiet uh, class of reservoir simulation you will ever have. Uh, you, you don't have anything to to say, to comment, any any doubts about what Guilherme Avanti said. Okay. This, uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, I would I would like to thank you, Avanti, for the seminar, for the, the class, and of course uh, the the class is being recorded. You can uh, check the uh, again the video if you have any questions or send an email that we can answer to you. Okay. okay so thank, thank you, you. Professor. Thank you. Thank you all for the presence. And the first part of the video is already. Uh, on the on the model, and I'll, I'll just put the second part now. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll, I'll st stop recording now.